All right, guys, well, I'm back today with another budget night vision device, and this particular version is a monocular with multiple mounting points. A digital night vision device seems to be the way to go when you're looking for a reasonably priced night vision that won't break the bank and actually work. I've reviewed a ton on the channel, and the company that actually reached out to me and sent this, A-C-P-O-T-E-L, I can't quite pronounce it, saw a lot of those videos and wanted me to take a look at their monocular because they thought it offered some very nice features at a very reasonable price point. The price itself comes in at $147.96 with free Amazon Prime shipping, and that includes the monocular, a case, uh, recharging cables, everything you need to start using your monocular for surveillance, hunting situations, or just kind of playing around at night, looking to see what's in your yard, whether it be varmints, critters, or people kind of coming on your property. This is a great way to look around, or at least digital night vision is in general. Now, one thing about digital night vision is you do actually look at a screen rather than looking just through a lens system. So what you're essentially doing is picking up the image, translating onto a digital screen, and looking at that screen. This one has a built-in IR illuminator in the monocular itself, and most of the digital night vision do. Now that we've talked about basic overview of digital night vision, let's talk about this particular monocular as well as a way to save some money. This company was nice enough to generate a coupon code for 10% off, dropping the price down to about $133 with free Amazon Prime shipping. Again, the link and the code will be in the description below if you decide you like this at the end of the video. Now, this particular monocular has a lot of positives, but it also has some negatives. So watch the full review to the end to make sure you understand what you're getting before you purchase something like this. So the first thing I want to talk about is its size, and that's what really makes it stand out from some of the other night vision I've reviewed in the past. Now, when I talk about night vision binoculars being digital night vision, essentially what I'm saying is you can use both eyes to look at the screen, whereas a monocular, you can only use one eye to look at a screen, and that is something to consider when you're purchasing something like this. The uh, Right off the bat, when you're buying a smaller monocular rather than one of those larger pair of binoculars that I reviewed in the past, you're looking at a much smaller screen. So if your eyesight is a problem, going with the larger options is much better when it comes to just the viewing window and viewing image when you're looking through it, as well as the overall feel when it comes to recording with the digital megapixels as well as battery life. In a nutshell, you can fit more batteries in a bigger monocular than you can in a smaller monocular. So that is something to consider. This one is actually very lightweight, made out of a kind of cheap feeling plastic, but most of these are. It's powered off of one CR123A battery, and it powers a very small IR emitter located at the bottom. Some of the other digital night vision that I've reviewed in the past uses a much better IR emitter, and that is really evident when you're using this. One of the first negatives and one of the first things I want to say right off the bat is if you're looking for extended surveillance range, this is not going to be as good, again, as some of those digital night vision binoculars I've reviewed in the past. But if you're looking for more of a compact feel that you can slip in a pack, in a belt, or something like that, you do have to make sacrifices, and that is one of those sacrifices, a smaller emitter, and only one battery. Now, that also can be a positive. If you're just looking to survey within about 150 yards, and you have a couple of CR122, or sorry, CR123A batteries, that is a pretty cool option. You don't have to drop eight AA batteries in here every time you want to change the batteries, just one battery. It's got a nice hand strap, and it's actually very ergonomic. You can control all the controls up here with the digital zoom in and the IR illumination, the record feature, the on and off, and it's got that filter on the front. You can focus in the front and in the back to dial everything in perfectly, and it helps you really kind of dial in the image from the front, but then dial your eye into the screen on the back, making sure you get the perfect image. Again, it does record to that micro USB card, which is pretty cool. But as you can see in a minute here, I'm going to show you guys the images. It is rather pixelated compared to some of the bigger digital night vision binoculars. So if you're primarily using this to record varmint in your field or hunts or things like that, you're better off going with the larger monocular rather than the smaller one because the image quality is just better if you wanted to repost those videos online or kind of store those images to show people the hunt that you just went on. 
Now let's take a look at the recording from the digital night vision monocular. You can see my shed at about 25 yards and clearly see through the glass and the IR illuminator does very good. All we have right now is a little bit of moonlight. Now it actually stretches out to about 200 yards. You can see the trees behind the building. Those are being illuminated by a street light and they work pretty well. Here is a car coming right now and I want to show you guys, it doesn't actually completely blind you looking at those headlights. You can see right there it does the auto dim and it really does dim and brighten the screen so it doesn't completely blind you. Here's picking up another car coming down and you'll see in a minute it'll try to auto dim again and kind of correct itself going back and forth a little bit. So that's not a change in the car lights, that is the change in the auto dim in the monocular. This is another 20 yard shot of my truck and you can see all the subtle details and man-made objects that reflect IR light very nicely. So for surveillance close up in and around the city and things like that works pretty well. Here's a 225 yard shot to a shed and an outbuilding and that really shows you how well it works at a distance. Right now you can see that it started off pitch black and I'm cycling up through the IR modes. And then I'm going to cycle back down to no IR light. You can see it goes pitch black again. And this is at about 125 yards to the tree line. You can see the fence and the mailbox is pretty good. So now that we've looked all of the images and you get a good understanding of how it looks through the monocular, I do want to talk about its mounting capabilities because that is where this one kind of really stands out. It's got two mounting options, the pick mount and then the tripod mount with the standard tripod thread. Now what I have here is a Best Garter Picatinny to Picatinny mount adapter, and this mounts on here, and then it will mount onto a pick rail behind a night vision red dot. Now here's the problem. Can you guys see this pick rail? And you see the center line of this optic. Well, if you mount it, it's off center from the optic, so your red dot is going to be emitted on the left side of the image, so it's really hard to get everything lined up. Not only that, this is just plastic mounted to plastic, and you do have some flex. So every time you mount it and remount it, it's going to be shifted left and right. So it is possible to use the pick rail, and I will leave this in the description below. These are like 15 bucks but I wouldn't necessarily rely on that for actual large caliber uh, weapons. I would mainly use that for like 22 varmint hunting, and then you are still gonna have to play with it, something to consider. I don't know why they didn't line it up with a center line. That just seems like a really dumb mistake to me. They have all the dimensions. Why didn't they line it up center? Because that's clearly what it's for to be mounted to a weapon site. Now, what does look like it's lined up center is this adapter mount right here for a tripod. Now, they actually make a tripod to pick a tinny mount adapter on Amazon. Again, I'll leave in the link in the description below. But you can see the height over bore is definitely different. So you might be overshooting your red dot and have to elevate your red dot with a riser. So in a nutshell, this can be mounted to a weapon, although I'm not quite sure about the recoil management of this. I've only tried it on a 22 and it was kind of janky at best with this mount, and I haven't received the other mount for the bottom yet. I'll probably be looking at that in the future. But if it is something you wanna play with, that is a good option to try to use this bottom mount. I feel like that's a much more solid mount, and it's much more in line with the center. I think that may be a good option for you guys. And also, if you use it like this, the image will be the correct way if you are recording. So I'll be trying that in the future. So in a nutshell, the image clarity, the overall quality of the mounts, and a few other things like the fact that it doesn't have a really strong emitter are a lot of the negatives with this night vision monocular. But what you do get are actual mounting options rather than most of the monoculars don't have those mounting options. You're just kind of stuck without them. You also have a really small and compact size, and not to mention this is only $133, so it does work for what it is. And I'm not complaining too much about the monocular at this price because it does have a lot of positive features. So I hope this kind of lays out the pluses and minuses of a monocular like this so you can make an informed decision. Again, if you're looking for something that you're not worried about size, I highly recommend checking out some of my other reviews, but if size is a concern and mounting it to like a 22 varmint gun is an option, this is, this is something to consider. You're not going to be disappointed. It works. It doesn't skip on or off. It records as it should. Um, but again, just remember some of those negatives. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.